In this lesson, we're going to look at examples of planetary gravity. And by planetary gravity, what I mean is the gravity or the acceleration of gravity uh, near the surface of a planet. So we recall that there is a formula for the force of gravity where the force of gravity equals mg, m being the mass in kilograms, and g being the acceleration of gravity at the surface. We also have another formula for the force of gravity, and that's Newton's law of universal gravitation. Force of gravity equals big G. Here I'll use a big M for the mass of the planet and a little m for the mass of an object over R squared, where R is the distance between centers of the two objects. Now, for an object that's near the surface of a planet, R essentially becomes the radius of that planet. Because both of these formulas give us the force of gravity, we can set them equal to each other. So what I have is mg equals g, mass of the planet, mass of the object, over r squared. And then you can see the mass of the object will divide out, giving us the equation for the acceleration of gravity, big G, mass of the planet, over radius of the planet squared. So this is formula for the acceleration of gravity near the surface of a planet. Now sometimes you'll encounter a problem that says, Suppose a planet is discovered that has double the mass of the Earth and triple the radius of the Earth. What is the acceleration of gravity at the surface of that planet? For that, I can remember this. G, little g, equals g mass over r squared. So for the Earth, it's big G, mass of the Earth over radius of the Earth squared. So my new planet, planet X, is double the mass and triple the radius. So I simply plug these into this formula, uh, excuse me, little g on planet x equals big G, double the mass over triple the radius squared. Notice that the distance of the radius is being squared, so this has the effect of becoming 2 on top and 9 on the bottom, leaving me then g mass of the earth over radius of the earth squared. In other words, the acceleration of gravity on planet X is going to be two-ninths of the acceleration of gravity on the planet Earth. Something like that. So that's one way that you can solve these types of problems. Another example of a planetary gravity type of problem has to do with what we call escape velocity. Now escape velocity is defined as the velocity at which if you were to propel an object with this velocity it would simply move away from the planet and never return. It would be fast enough to escape completely the effect of gravity. What that means is, so if I have a planet here and I have an object here and it's moving with just enough velocity, we'll call that V escape, V escape, there we go. So the escape velocity. So what's gonna happen here, it has just enough, so as it moves away, of course, gravity is going to be pulling back on it. It's going to be converting kinetic energy into gravitational energy. Well, if the velocity is fast enough, it will be able to get out here infinitely far away with zero kinetic energy and zero gravitational energy. Then it will not ever fall back down. So to find an expression for the escape velocity, what we do is we do energy initial equals energy final. It's just a conservation of energy problem. So the initial energy, this has kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. And it also has gravitational potential energy. So, but we're going to look at this in the universal sense. So gravitational potential energy, we have two different expressions. There's mgh if we're in a constant gravitational field. And there's also minus g m m over r if we are in a non-constant gravitational field. Now, since we're talking escape velocity, we're moving this thing far enough away, an appreciable distance, so the gravitational field is not constant. So we're going to be using this gravitational potential energy formula. So the kinetic energy 1 half mv squared plus a negative gmm over r that's our initial energy right there and that is going to equal our final energy we want our final kinetic to be zero and we want our final gravitational to be zero so basically we're setting this equal to zero if we want this velocity to be fast enough to be what we call the escape velocity. So now I simply solve this for v, the escape velocity. So 1 half mv escape squared equals, let's add this over, g mass of the planet, mass of the object over r. r is the radius of the planet, the distance here at which it was originally located. And so notice that the mass will divide out, mass of the object, and this 2 will come up on top. So I have escape velocity squared equals 2 
g mass of the planet over radius of the planet. I simply square root this to get the escape velocity. This is an expression for the escape velocity.